So we're right smack dab in the middle of tomato season. Uh, in most parts of the country, it's probably uh, much farther along in your tomato season than ours here in Wyoming. But um, I've been thinking a lot about tomatoes lately because I just started picking our ripe greenhouse tomatoes uh, a couple days ago and thought I'd share some tips for you if you're a beginner grower um, because it's taken me a lot of trial and error to get good at growing greenhouse tomatoes and um, I've learned a thing or two about growing a lot of tomatoes in a really small space. So um, what I'm going to focus on today is indeterminate tomatoes. So I'm not very experienced with determinates. That's a different thing. Um, here in Wyoming in a greenhouse, growing indeterminates is pretty much the only way to make money um, just because we have such a short season. So you get a lot higher yield over a longer period of time. I'm not going to go into the difference between determinate and indeterminate in this video. Um, there's a lot of information about that on the internet, but basically it's, you get a steady yield of tomatoes over a longer period of time. Whereas determinates, you get all your yield of tomatoes over a period of a couple weeks. But anyway, I'm going to jump into the tips and hope you enjoy this video. All right. My number one tip with growing tomatoes, if you're a beginner is to grow hybrid varieties. Now I know a lot of people out there are talking about heirlooms being the best flavor and believe me they're right it is far better flavor than hybrids but if you're a beginner and you just want to put tomatoes in your freezer or can them i highly recommend you start off with hybrid varieties because they're going to grow a lot faster they're going to yield a lot better and they're going to have a lot less disease pressure with heirlooms i've that the heirlooms that i have grown i almost always lost the entire crop by the time I even got a tomato from them. Or if I did get a tomato, it was just a minuscule yield. And for me, if I'm putting all the effort into growing tomatoes, I have to get a yield because it's a business for me. So getting tomatoes is the only way that I make money. So if I get a really bad bat of blight in July, that kills a lot of profit that I could make from the yield of tomatoes that were going to come later. So I almost all grow hybrids now on the farm and this, that's kind of a farm thing. Um, eventually when I have my own property, I'd love to grow heirlooms, but cause you know, I'm kind of more experienced with growing tomatoes now and know what to do to avoid a lot of the problems. But if you're a beginner, I highly recommend you try some hybrids. Um, something like a super sweet 100 is a great cherry tomato. It's probably one of my favorite tomatoes out there. Um, these are all hybrid beefsteak tomatoes. Um, I believe they're called Geronimo, Cayman or something. And you don't have to get fancy hybrids like I do. I have special greenhouse hybrids, but um, any seed company is going to have a pretty decent selection of F1 hybrids. And they're going to tell you the disease resistance. And a big one you want to look out for is things like tobacco mosaic virus resistance or fusarium wilt resistance. Those are diseases that happen a lot if you're, especially if you're growing in new soil um, that doesn't drain well and stuff like that. If your, your varieties are more resistant to those things, you're going to have a better chance of getting tomatoes. So another great tip for getting a ton of tomatoes is to feed them with a nitrogen fertilizer of some kind once a month. So this is called the Neversink blend. Uh, Neversink farm is a great farm in upstate New York. They have a, uh, they also make tools um, called neversinkfarmtools.com. If you want to buy their tools, they have phenomenal gardening and farming tools, but um, he's developed uh, a mix of basically alfalfa meal, uh, feather meal, and a couple of other things from this company in uh, Virginia called Seven Springs Farm Supply, where you can buy this stuff. And, um, it sounds expensive when you buy it because you have to pay for shipping and stuff, but it's really not because this goes a long way, especially for if you're just feeding tomatoes with it. And it's a lot easier than moving compost around and stuff like that. All you got to do with this, um, and, and you don't have to use this. You can get alfalfa meal from a lot of different places. That's another great option. Feather meal. Um, you do need to start paying attention to the nitrogen, potassium, um, the MPK, I forgot what the other one is, uh, and start making sure that you're not 
doing too much nitrogen because feather meal is a lot higher nitrogen percentage than this. I think this is like a 622, feather meal is like a 13. So you need to use a lot less of feather meal. But um, if you use something like alfalfa meal or a mix that's like a 622, um, you're gonna be pretty safe and you will, cause there is problems you'll have if you do too much nitrogen. But um, if you feed them once a month, uh, they're going to just be green and healthy looking the entire time. And I'm not talking like very much, you know, every, I'm not talking like six months here. I'm talking like June, July, August. And all you need to do is dig a little trench around the plant like this and then put this stuff in there and drizzle a little bit in there and cover it. And all of the life in the soil will take care of breaking that down and it'll feed the plant really well. And especially once the plant starts to fruit, um, that's just going to increase your yields immensely. Um, you know, you could grow as much as like five into, you know, five plants worth of tomatoes on one plant, you know, by doing this kind of stuff. So it's a really cool little hack to get a lot more tomatoes in a small space. Um, we feed them basically once a week on the farm because we're a business, but you know, even if you did once a month, you're going to do a lot better than you would be if you just planted the tomato and forgot about it. So Highly recommend you try that. You could also use some liquid fertilizers out there and do some research because um, you do want to make sure you're not over fertilizing. But I think once a month is pretty safe for most things, even if you use something heavy. Um, but it's a really good idea and will just get you really, really healthy results. Um, you know, you'll be picking really good tomatoes all the way up until the end of September, early October, depending on your climate. So highly recommend you feed them once a month. So another big tip for better tomatoes earlier and more yield is pruning to a single stem. So what I mean by that is every week, go around your plants and trim off suckers, which are different on every type of plant. These are cherry tomatoes, so it's kind of straightforward. Pretty much every armpit, which is basically um, where you see the main stem here and then a no normal branch usually a sucker will start to grow and start a new growth tip over here. So we trim those off every week so the fo growth is all focused up. And um, so here's one right here. And we trim those off. And that focuses all the energy on the plant growing up and ripening the fruit as fast as possible. Um, because that's what a tomato plant wants to do. It wants to ripen fruit as fast as possible to reproduce. And so it just focuses its energy on that. And it also helps to trellis your tomatoes to grow them up like this. Um, you can't really do it in a tomato cage. There's a bunch of great videos on here already about trellising. There's one called Trellis to Make You Jealous uh, by a guy named Josh Satin that explains it all. And you could do that method in your garden easily and do the same thing. But the pruning to a single stem helps a lot with your uh, keeping your plant organized, less disease pressure because there's more airflow going in and out of the plant. And um, it, it just, gives you better results so it's something that we do and it's really only for the indeterminate tomatoes that you do this but we do it on every tomato on the farm all season long so if you keep your tomato leaves dry you're going to have a lot less disease pressure so in a greenhouse uh in a farm like ours we use drip tape like this that's what this is um, and the drip tape just comes on once a day automatically and waters them perfectly but that keeps the leaves dry and the roots perfectly moist all the time to grow really well. Um, in a garden, you probably don't need drip, drip tape. You know, it works, but it's kind of a lot of hassle and it's a pain to deal with with other crops. So if you just used a hose and a dram wand, you know, whatever you use to water by hand and water deeply underneath the leaves and take the effort to do that like once or twice a week, you're going to get really good results on keeping those leaves dry using a sprinkler you know it depends on your climate you might be able to get away with it but the leaves are going to be wet all the time or a lot more often um, and that's just going to increase your chances of getting blight which is pr probably the number one thing that stops your tomatoes from producing um, and just being successful so watering from underneath keeping those leaves dry is a great way to increase your odds of getting tomatoes so we're in our um, high tunnel greenhouse where this is our second succession of tomatoes and you'll notice they're a lot smaller um, and that's because we planted these ones after our last frost date which is technically in tomato season for Wyoming. Those first ones we used a little bit of propane heat and a little bit of a climate battery uh, situation with that greenhouse to keep things warm. We planted those in April which is like six weeks earlier than this. But 
in a garden, if you wait till after your last frost date, a week or two, and plant them then, and have the plants right and ready then, you're going to have a lot better results. We planted these on May 29th, which is a week after our frost date, and they are the healthiest second succession I've ever seen. And we did use a little bit of feather meal to help them out, but these were actually really bad plants at the time. They were yellow, purple, because the heating system with my nursery is pretty rough. And they look spectacular now because the ground is super warm and tomatoes will just take off when the ground is like 60, 70 degrees. And they're going to have a lot less struggle when they are in a healthy environment like that. A lot of people get really excited when it's May and the weather starts warming up, the sun's out, and they think that the soil's warm enough to plant tomatoes and everything in their garden. But usually, especially in Wyoming, this is the case. I see people plant like mid-May. And there's a frost still coming and then the plants are dead and if they do survive they're going to be really really stunted and not going to grow very healthy all plants grow best when they are growing in a totally uninterrupted start to finish growth pattern and whenever they're stunted they take forever these tomatoes have just took off the day i put them in the ground and they're super healthy i think we're going to get a really nice crop by around i don't know late August, September, maybe earlier. Um, but if you grow tomatoes in their season, which is when they're basically designed to grow in, you're gonna have way better results than if you try and plant them earlier uh, in your garden. So wait till that soil is really, really warm. And a few weeks after your frost date is gonna be a great time to plant them. So another tip to get better results with your tomatoes is to pick them when they're blushing like this. See this guy is just starting to turn red, but he's not really ripe on the vine. This is a great time to pick them and ripen them inside because if you leave them on the plant, they're gonna split a lot more often. Now I know this is a really controversial tip and yes, vine ripened tomatoes do taste better, but if you're looking to get more shelf life on your tomatoes and just overall more success, uh, this is a great way to do it because if you've had tomatoes that are vine ripe and they split and you don't have time to eat them, they're going to mold and just get gross a lot more often. And you could do a little hybrid of this. You know, you don't have to be real like scientific like I do, but I'm doing this as a business. So if ever I'm shipping these to a customer, they have to be prime. You know, I can't have them splitting and getting moldy. So that's why I do this. Um, and the flavor is almost as good. It's probably 90% as good as complete vine ripened. So this is what I do and it works really well for me. And especially if you let them ripen and get really, really mushy, they'll go really well in the next tip I'm gonna share. All right, so the last tip is probably my favorite and that is this, freezing your tomatoes when they're ripe. So I don't can, I don't know how to can. And I definitely don't have time to can the tomatoes. I don't sell with being a farm. Um, so what I do is I freeze these and I sell them in the winter. But if you're just growing tomatoes and you have a truckload one week, you know, say it's a really hot week and they all ripen at the same time, uh, you don't have time to eat all of them. Just put them in a bag, freeze them whole, do nothing else. And then in January, you got a whole freezer full of delicious tomatoes that all you got to do is throw them in any soup, stew, curry throw them in rock solid frozen and they'll disintegrate into the most beautiful tomato flavor that you could ask for for something like a stew um and honestly that's kind of my favorite way to eat tomatoes anyway is like in curries um it doesn't even matter what kind of tomato you got they're all going to have a different flavor to your dish uh cherry tomatoes are spectacular with this um they're probably our hottest seller for frozen tomatoes so we got some cherries in here um these are just regular greenhouse beef, beef steaks, and we have cherries right here. So these are delicious. They add sweetness to your dish. Um, I'm just blown away by how well this works. I, I don't really want to can, you know. I guess canning is good if you have a power outage. Um, this would not be good in a power outage situation, but it is a phenomenal way to preserve your tomatoes with really little effort and just it's one of my favorite things to sell in the winter time because every time people try it they just light up and they come back and buy like 10 pounds so you got to try freezing your tomatoes 
in the summertime. So hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one.